very much for coming in on a Monday morning. Many of you have seen or participated in the, uh, the spreading of the sheet mulch over there in front of the Franklin Dining Commons. Some of you walked by and said, what's that all about? Uh, I asked uh, Ryan Hart to come here today to talk to us about the project, but also about permaculture in general. Ryan is a sustainability specialist for auxiliary services at UMass. Uh, and uh, and a good friend. And so, would you uh, join me in welcoming Ryan? Test, test. Hello. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ryan Harb. I'm a sustainability specialist for UMass. And before that, I was a student here. I was an undergraduate in the School of Business. Uh, after that, I was a little bit confused. I thought, what am I, what am I doing with my life? I don't really want to work for any of the businesses that are coming out there. And I want, to, I want to do something that's more environmentally and socially responsible. So I got into a master's program here at UMass. It was called Green Building. And when I was in that program, I learned about permaculture. I took a class about permaculture outside of UMass, and I became a certified permaculture designer and instructor. So in addition to having a master's degree, I'm really specializing in permaculture these days. So that's a little bit about my background, and I'm going to share with you a little, a little story before we get started. So this story is about a man who saw some things in the world that he really didn't like. He set out on a quest to change those things, and soon he realized how huge and complicated the systems were that badly needed changing. How does one single person go about enacting such change in the world, he wondered. He thought, and he thought, and he learned a lot by thinking. He learned about the environmental and social issues from some of the best teachers in the world. And soon it became apparent how related these two issues were. And something clicked. He realized that you can do good in the world without much money and help people and the environment at the same time. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is too good to be true. No way can anything be that simple, he thought. But it can be. And this man is standing before you right now. I am him, and I'm going to explain to you all today how simple it can be to solve some of the world's most pressing issues. So let me begin to tell you about a word, about a lifestyle, called permaculture. So in this presentation, we're going to talk about what is permaculture. Has anyone heard about it before, before today? Has anyone heard about the UMass Permaculture Project? Show of hands, raise them high. OK, good amount of you. And a lot of you haven't. That's good. So today will be a learning day for some of you. So we're going to talk about what is permaculture. We're going to get into the ethics of permaculture, as well as some of the principles. In addition to that, we're going to talk about growing food, because that's why a lot of you are in this class, learning how to grow food, right, in a responsible way. We're also going to look at a few case studies, people in this area who are doing permaculture and are doing it successfully. And then I'm going to give you all some resources at the end where, if you're very interested in this, you actually have places to go. So let's start off by defining what is permaculture. So permaculture comes from Australia. There's a man named Bill Mollison. And he merged two words, permanent and agriculture. And this was created to help solve some of the issues that are associated with modern agriculture. And how to do this? Well, first, look outside. What's happening around you? Look at nature, because nature does it pretty well. And instead of trying to one-up nature, permaculture is all about mimicking nature. Permaculture is also about valuing diversity. Because not many places in nature we find just one big plot of land with just one species growing on it, i.e. monoculture. That doesn't really happen too much. Permaculture is also about growing perennials, not just annual vegetables. Ones that come back, you seed them, you sow them in the ground, and they'll produce food for you year after year, not just once. So that means less energy, less human input, more lower maintenance garden. 
It's also going to provide an abundance of food and resources. Does that sound good to you all? Do you want to learn about that stuff? Yeah. Yeah? All right. So I'm going to tell you about it. <coughs> but first, let's talk a little bit about what's happening in the world right now. This may be a review for some of you, but a lot of the facts that I'm going to talk to you about from, come from an author named Tom Hartman. And they deal with what's happening in modern agriculture. So let's start out with the soil first. Soil is something that's very important. We need good soil to grow good food. And what's happening is more than 75% of our topsoil that existed worldwide when Europeans first colonized America is now gone. 75%. That's a lot. That topsoil is really important. And a major reason for this is because of industrial agriculture, i.e. monoculture. All one crop, no diversity, growing on a huge tract of land, all competing for the same resources. Doesn't that sound, just by saying that, like it's a little bit wrong? Obviously, they're all going to be taking the same nutrients, the same minerals on the ground, and after a while, you're going to have to add synthetic minerals back to the soil. So that's what we've been doing. So our soil quality is degrading at an unprecedented rate right now. And when we have low quality soil, our food is also of low quality. We have this dependence right now on modern agriculture. You all have probably have heard this before, an apple a day keeps the doctor away, right? Well nowadays an apple can have up to 90% less than the nutritional value of an apple from 1930. Think about that for a second. And then maybe we have to change that saying a little bit. Instead of an apple a day, it's more like five to nine apples a day. Who's the doctor away? Maybe about 35 apples a week. Now, I don't know about you, but I love apples. It's just not that much. <laughs> now, we've touched upon the human health component, how our food quality is going down. So now, let's look at what, what's happening with the environment around us. So at a January 1999 meeting of the American Association for the Advancement of Science, research, researchers reported that the 7,000 square mile dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico has doubled in size since 1992. And that's leaving a huge area now devoid of almost every form of life except certain kinds of bacteria. So all that red you see on that map up there, they call that a dead zone. There's nothing that's living there. And the cause, according to Purdue University professor Otto Doring, is related to the 6.5 million metric tons of nitrogen dumped as fertilizer on U.S. agriculture land each year. The nitrogen makes, it, makes its way into thousands of waterways, but then ends up in the Mississippi River. And that Mississippi River eventually drains into the Gulf. Similar oceanic dead zones are also exploding all over the world. There's hundreds, maybe over a thousand of these in the world right now. So we're essentially creating another monoculture in our oceans due to the monoculture methods of our climate. 